All right, segment two here of the family update is going to be um, just reviewing uh, a little bit more information about health and safety and where we are with things with New York State Health. Um, as I mentioned in the first segment, just a reminder that there's a big difference between the governor's uh, headlines that come from his news conferences um, to the guidelines that we receive from like Department of Health um, and then the reality of actually putting them into place and implementing them. We work on it, but there is a often a, a large time gap between these. So we're going to talk a little bit more about the yellow, red, and orange zones. The governor announced that in early October, October 6. We didn't receive a uh, clarifying uh, email from Department of Health about exactly what each zone was going to be until October 25th. So there's a couple days in between there um, that gets us here, and then we're working on that um, throughout this week. Again, the New York microcluster strategy was formalized in a document that we received on October 25th, although this is dated October 21st. It um, clarifies and changes um, some of the way that the state is going to go about looking at very specific zip codes, um, data within those, a lot more reporting requirements we have, a lot more partnership with our Livingston County Department of Health. Again, as mentioned in the previous segment, it broke that up into three zones indicating that schools could remain open if there's 20% rotating um, tests of students and staff. Just a reminder from last um, segment as well that um, based on current capacity, we do not have enough current capacity to remain open if we are in the yellow zone. And so I just wanna make sure everybody's up front and understanding that if we find ourselves in any of these three zones, we will be moving to remote learning um, this may change and we'll keep you updated on it, but right now, based on the lack of testing availability, for just Livonia Central School District alone, that would be 306, approximately 360 tests um, each week. Um, and so that would significantly increase um, the need for testing. And right now, in conversations with the Department of Health, nothing um, of their own doing. They've been trying to secure more. You're going to see some information about how they have secured more testing but still on not the level that would be needed um, if we were in this. And again, if other school districts became in this, um, that, would, that would significantly increase the testing needed. Looking a little bit more closer, how do you get into one of these zones? And so this is what was released in that document that we received an email on the 25th about. Um, they would be looking at the geographic area as a seven day rolling average with a positivity above 3.5%. I'm gonna share with you some um, information that we're not there yet, but also um, some websites so you can keep track of where we would be. And within that geographic area, as 15 or more new daily cases per 100,000 residents on a seven day average. So that's the first yellow zone and then it moves up, um, it moves up from there. So again, here's the website that you can get right from New York State. Um, looking last week, we had a positive rate of 3.4 and only six um, new tested during that day. So those, those are how you toggle between a couple of those. Um, as of today, they've added a new category that you can find there that is the seven day average they incorporate in there. So you can see our seven day average is 2.5%. So that's below um, entering into a yellow zone, but it is certainly approaching it because if you had looked at this in prior weeks, we were at one or below. Um, so we're creeping up. We're heading in a direction that may have us become a yellow zone at some point in time in the future. Um, I'm just sharing enough information with you so you can start preparing in case we were. Again, if, if we were, we were going to need to make sure that we move to a remote learning situation, and that would mean that any in-person um, learner and family should be prepared for a periodic closure lasting at least a few weeks um, because it will take some time for us to get out. Again, this is how you get out of the zone as it was shared. Um, and so uh, we would need to see in that seven day rolling average. So that means it's going to move slow because it's going to keep the numbers that got us there. And it's going to take at least a week to clear those numbers that got us there. Um, and so it'll take some time. And so I would, I would say if we get in one of these zones, I would say two weeks minimum, two weeks approximate um, would be the periodic closure. Um, so please make sure you're using your contingency planning accordingly as we move into November and December 
um, where certainly across our nation we're seeing uh, cases uh, increase in pretty significant ways. Again, we're using our pre-K to uh, grade 12 New York State Department of Health um, toolkit, which is available. We broke this down for you earlier this month, um, but home should be doing their daily health screening. I think that's what's helped us. You'll see then in the data that we have, we have not yet, knock on wood, and certainly um, keep good vibes moving in that way. Have not had a student um, positive case yet. Um, we've had two staff member cases that we've communicated to the community. But daily health screening for both our students and our staff. If you feel sick, we need you to stay home um, and um, make sure that uh, we monitor that. Again, sorry, again, each day uh, we're asking um, families to, they've att you've attested, um, we did our most recent one there in October, that you're doing this each day. The daily temperature and wellness checks before school, you're looking into these categories, um, these symptoms, keeping your students home. If you have them, contacting our nurse of why they've kept home and they'll work you through um, the protocol. We are also doing initial school screenings. And so <clears throat> we're monitoring our students and staff as they're in school for the same uh, symptoms. At the elementary school, um, what we've seen is that since uh, September 14th, 173 students have been entered into the COVID protocol. Um, it has changed a little bit over time. Again, we got the toolkit right around here, right around the change of September and October. Um, you can see that some days are a little different than others. Um, of those 173, we have 108 tests. Um, and they have all re resulted in negative results um, for our elementary school students. At the middle high school, again, similar graphs. From 914, we've had 133 students enter into the protocol. And right now, as of yesterday afternoon, when I pulled this data, we had 100 tests, um, and they've all been negative results for students at the middle high school. As far as staff goes, um, we, since September 1st and coming back with our staff, we've had 40 staff members entered into a COVID-19 protocol. Um, again, those are the numbers up here. We've had 21 negative test results and two positive cases. So with any of these slides, you might ask, why don't we have the same amount of negative tests as we would with um, people entering the protocol? Some people have entered the protocol for precautionary um, observation and don't go get a test until um, or when or and then they wouldn't get a test if they didn't if symptoms um, presented themselves so there will be differing numbers through this we'll continue to share with them share these with you in our updates so you know where we are uh, wanting to be transparent and upfront our nurses um, our families our students our teachers everyone's doing a tremendous job of um, again being self-aware being responsible uh, communicating and making sure that um, we stay on top of these things. And so far, um, I think that has really made a huge difference for us in our experience here. Returning to school, there is protocols out there for when you're able to come back. Um, but once you're in the protocol, we have to follow through with the algorithm. Your doctor could give you an alternative diagnosis. That would be the other reason why testing numbers are going to be a little bit lower than um, the amount of students or staff we have in a protocol. If there's no test and no alternative diagnosis, then yes, students need to stay out. We've had some families choose this as well. When there's positive test results, again, we've had two negative um, test results for staff members. Uh, we, we run through the, the toolkit process and the algorithm. We work very closely with Livingston County Department of Health to make sure we're implementing in the right uh, way. If there's a positive test result, that, um, that person would be 10 days after symptom onset. Um, symptoms need to be improving and they need to be fever free for at least 72 hours uh, before they were able to return. Um, we go through contact tracing. So we were sharing with Livingston um, County Department of Health names, um, parent names, contacts, home address, and we work through that process of um, direct contacts, 
versus contacts of contacts. Um, we provide them a list um, and then we move forward um, from there. All that is, um, I think, important information to know, but we also know that the best way to stay healthy is to take care of yourself, take care of your family, um, make sure that we're, we're having the right self-care for our families and our students. Um, unplugging, making that time over the weekend at night. I know um, very difficult for me to do as well, um, but need to do it. You need to take care of one another. Um, that's how we're going to make it through this. Um, and that's how we're going to, that's how we're going to keep on moving forward and safely moving forward. So thank you for all your efforts. We really appreciate them. Um, again, we'll provide another family update in a couple weeks, and if we need to share any other information in between there, we certainly will. So again, thank you very much. Um, take care of yourself, stay healthy, and be well.